So on crossing the sea, Musa a.s. he was to go to Mount Tu for a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember the Prophet wasallam. he was also called up to the seven heavens, right? Mi'raj. Why? In order to be given a very important instruction. Musa a.s. was called on Mount Tu to be given important instructions as well. Musa a.s. when he went to Mount Tu, he went early. All right, he made haste to go to the mountain and he left his brother Harun alayhi salam in charge over the children of Israel. Now when he arrived early in haste, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, "Wama a'jalaka?" And what made you hasten? "An qawmik from your people, ya Musa o Musa." Meaning, how come you rushed away from them? How come you left them? How come you came early? It seems as though Musa alayhi salam was meant to bring Bani Israel as well. Or at least some of them. But you know what? There's a large group of people. This is an entire nation. An entire community. That is traveling together. Then what happens? You slow down. Right? Is there any difference between traveling all by yourself and traveling with the six of your family members? Forget about traveling. Getting out of the house. Right? So Musa alayhi salam, what happened? He left the Bani Israel. Because obviously they were slowing him down. He was eager to go to Mount Tur and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wanted to hear him. He wanted to receive the treasure that Allah was going to give him. So he left the Bani Israel, but he didn't just leave them to fend for themselves. He appointed Harun alayhi salam as leader. And he also advised Harun alayhi salam as to how to guide them and how to lead them. But when he got there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, Why? وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى قال موسى عليه السلام said هم أولئي they are أولئي is from أولئك alright أولئي those so they are على أثري they are upon my أثر what is أثر tracks alright so for instance a person is walking and when he has walked what is he going to leave behind footprints and that is what أثر alright and أثر from this is also used for effect or trace over here it refers to Trace, my track. Meaning, they are right behind me. I didn't leave them at the sea. I didn't leave them very far. They're right behind me. They have arrived and they're settled near the mountain. And the reason why I came early, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ And I came rushing to you, Rabbi, O my Lord, لِتَرْضَى So that you would be happy. You would be pleased. I rushed to you to make you happy. Because when you go early, right, somewhere for a meeting, for an appointment, to see somebody, what does it show? That you are very interested in that meeting, right? You're giving importance to that person. But when you come late, what does that show? You don't really care, right? So, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى I came early to you, my Lord, so that you would be happy with me. And this is something that we can apply to our lives as well. That when the time for something begins, then don't delay. So for instance, when it comes to salah, when it comes to you know seeking knowledge, when it comes to performing a good deed, then don't delay unnecessarily. Don't be lazy. Just do it. Do it early, in a timely manner, seeking Allah's pleasure. Qala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَإِنَّا then indeed we, قَدْ fatanna, We have tested. قَوْمَكَ your people مِنْ بَعْدِكْ after you. Meaning when you left your people, your people were put to a test. Why? What's the answer? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test the Bani Israel? To test their faith, but why? Why test the Bani Israel? Okay. 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 These are all correct answers. Why are we tested? Because this life is a test. Alright? This life is a test. When Allah gives a blessing, when Allah takes a blessing away. When our circumstances change, when they improve, or when they become difficult, Allah is testing us through one way or another. Now you would think the Bani Israel, their test is just over because they have just been freed. Right? They were being patient over the persecution they were facing. And now, alhamdulillah, they're free, their test is over. No. One test is over, and now another will begin. Remember this in life, that whenever things are good, then a new test is coming up. 
Whenever things are good, a new test is coming up. And whenever things are bad, you are in a test for sure. You know, like Umar radiallahu anhu said that, Bulina bisarra'i fasabarna. That we were tested through difficulty and we were patient. But when we were tested through ease, we were not patient. Nabulina bidarra'i fasabarna. We were tested through difficulty, we were patient because we recognized that as a test. And ease, we didn't consider that to be a test. But we were also being tested over there. So anyway, فَإِنَّا قَدْ فَتَنَّا قَوْمَكَ مِنْ بَعْدِكَ وَأَضَلَّهُمُ السَّامِرِي And Samiri, who was Samiri? A man who was with the Bani Israel, either he was from the Bani Israel or he was an Egyptian. Allahu A'lam. There's a huge discussion over this and I'm not going to go into that because it's not of relevance to us. Whether Samiri was an Israelite or he was not a man by the name of Samiri, he led the Bani Israel astray. Meaning the Bani Israel failed the test. So فَرَجِعَ Musa. So Musa a.s. returned إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ to his people. When did he return? After 40 nights. Because remember that this appointment was for initially 30 nights and then it was extended to 40 nights. And Musa a.s. he was given the Torah. He was given the Torah written on the tablets. Alwah. Written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Alwah. And for 40 nights, Musa a.s. he kept himself busy in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Focused ibadah. With no distractions, nothing. At the end of this, Musa a.s. was told, your people failed the test that we put them in. So in a way, Musa a.s. was being prepared. That when you go back, you'll see something very different. So be ready for that. فَرَجَعَ مُوسَىٰ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ Musa a.s. returned to his people carrying the alwah. And how was he? غَضْبَان أَسِفَ He was angry. He was upset. غَضْبَان Does it remind you of a word? غَضْبَان رَحْمَان Same pattern, right? رَحْمَان is who? Very, very, very merciful. غَضْبَان is who? Very, very, very angry. Like so angry you don't want to go near them. Ghadban. Extremely upset. And asif. Asif, we have done this word earlier. What does it mean? It's a combination of grief and anger. Grief and anger. Like you're, you're feeling really sad about something and at the same time you're angry. You're very sad and you're angry. You're upset. How angry and upset and grieved was Musa a.s. that when he reached his people, he saw the Bani Israel. In the Quran we learn he threw the alwah. Imagine. He just put them down and he went straight to his brother Harun a.s. and he grabbed him by his beard and his head. What were you doing? Why didn't you stop them? He was so angry. He was so furious. Qala he said, Ya qawmi, O oh my people, Alam ya'idkum rabbukum? Did your Lord not promise you? Wa'dan hasanan, a good promise? Why do you think I was away? I went because Allah had promised a good promise for you. And what was that? The promise of guidance. I went to receive guidance. I went to bring instruction, the Torah for you. What were you doing here? Alam ya'idkum rabbukum wa'dan hasanan? Afatala. A did. Fatala. Fadan tala. It became too long. Alaykum for you al-ahdu, the term. Tala from the root letters, ta waw lam, tul. Tul is to be long. And the word ahd, ahd is used for a promise, but it's also used for time. Over here, ahd gives the meaning of time. Okay, because every promise for its fulfillment is a time. Isn't it? Right? For the fulfillment of every promise is a time. It's fixed. So for instance, you tell somebody, I promise next week I'll get this done. I promise by next year I'll get this done. So ahd is used for time as well as promise. So afatala alaykum al ahd. Then was the time too long for you? Meaning, I only went for 40 nights. Was that too long? That you forgot the basics of your religion? You forgot the wheed? What were you doing? Afatala alaykum al ahd. Am or aradtum you intended you wanted an yahilla alaykum that it should flood open on you غضب من ربكم anger of your Lord. 
فَأَخْلَفْتُمْ مَوْعِدِي So you went against my promise. Which promise did they make with Musa a.s. that they would obey him? Right? So in other words, Musa a.s. Because remember when he went, what happened? What was the test? How did Samiri lead the people astray? He made a calf, alright? A golden calf. And the people began worshipping it. Right? They took it as an idol. So when Musa a.s. came back, he was angry when he saw them in idol worship. And he admonished them. He said, I went for the fulfillment of a promise that was made for your sake. I wasn't chilling. You know, like if you go to work, all right, you go to do something and you come home and there is a disaster at home. What would you say? What would you say? You'd be upset, rightfully upset. That just because I was away, that doesn't mean you become so irresponsible. I wasn't hanging out. I wasn't wasting my time. I was busy doing something for you. You know, for instance, a father, he says, I was working all of this time for your sake, to bring money for you. And this is what you do in my absence? This is what you do? You act so irresponsibly? So the Bani Israel behaved in a similar manner. And then Musa a.s. says, there could only be two explanations for what you did. Either you thought, you considered that time while I was gone to be too long, because initially he had gone for 30 days, right? But then when he was there, it was extended to 40 nights. So he said, either you thought it was too long, you couldn't wait for me anymore, you thought I have forgotten you and I'm not coming back, so you should do something for yourself. And you thought Allah doesn't care for you, so you should just make an idol for your worship. That time was too long. Because you see, when, when a long period passes, and you're waiting, 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 and nothing happens, what do you do? You say, you know what? I'm going to do something for myself now. So for example, you tell your mother, can you please buy this for me? She says, okay, okay, okay. Every time you ask her, okay, okay, okay. A month goes by, then you're like, you know what? I think I have to do something myself. She's not going to get it. I have to get it myself. Just as an example, right? You ask your brother to help you move something out of your room. He says, okay, on the weekend. Weekend comes, he's nowhere to be found. He says, okay, next weekend. Two, three weeks go by. Then what happens? What do you do? You say, you know what? I have to do something myself. Because you gave up on him. So in other words, Musa is saying, did you give up on me? Did you give up on Allah? أَفَطَالَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْعَهْدِ Or the other explanation to what you did is that you didn't care about Allah. So you didn't mind being punished. أَمْ أَرَدْتُمْ أَنْ يَحِلَّ عَلَيْكُمْ غَضَبًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ You didn't mind being punished. What were you thinking? Why did you do this? قَالُوا The Bani Israel, they replied, making up an excuse, مَا أَخْلَفْنَا We did not break your promise. مَا أَخْلَفْنَا We did not go against مَوْعِدَكَ Your promise. مَوْعِدْ وَوْعِنْدَ We did not go against your promise بِمَلْكِنَا by our own will. مَلْك ميم لام كَافْ Any word comes to your mind? Mulk, milkiya, ownership, right? Authority, power. So over here, mulk means authority. We didn't do this by our own authority, our own accord, our own will. It just so happened. We didn't do it deliberately, in other words. Yeah, we didn't make the calf and we didn't worship it deliberately. It just so happened. So what do they come up with? What excuse do they give? They said, وَلَكِنَّا But we, humilna, We were made to carry. awzaran Burdens. awzar is a plural of wizard. A very heavy burden. We were made to carry burdens. What burdens were they that we were carrying? مِنْ زِينَةِ الْقَوْمِ From the zina of the people. What is zina? Adornment. Alright? And what are they referring to? Gold jewelry. Alright? Or precious jewelry that belong to the people of Fir'aun. They said we were carrying it and we were sick and tired of carrying it. So فَقَذَفْنَاهَا We threw it. From قَذَفَ قَافْ ذَالْفَ Remember the word فَقْذِفِيهِ قَذَفَ To throw. So we threw it. Meaning we threw it in the fire so that it would burn. فَكَذَلِكَ And thus الْقَسَامِرِ Samiri He threw it. Meaning he put it together. We just threw that gold in order to get rid of it. And Samiri, he alqa. Alqa, you know, remember the word alqa, like the magicians, they threw, 
right? But it also signifies that they produced. They produced their magic. They demonstrated their magic. So Samari, he produced this calf then. Right? He did this skillfully. فَكَذَلِكَ أَلْقَى السَّامِرِي Now, what is this? Some narrations, they tell us that the Bani Israel, when they left Egypt, secretly at night, they took along with them the gold and valuables of the Egyptians. Meaning, whatever they could take, they took it. Alright? And on settling down, when Musa a.s. went, uh, Harun a.s. is with them, they settled down, Harun a.s. realized what the Bani Israel had. They had the gold and precious valuables of the Egyptians. So he instructed the Bani Israel that no, this is something that you're not allowed to keep. This doesn't belong to you. You should not have it. You have to burn it. You have to get rid of it. Alright? You have to burn it. It's not correct for you to possess the belongings of other people. And remember that the previous nations, if they ever acquired any war booty, so for instance, any wealth that belonged to their enemy, if they got their hands on it, what were they supposed to do? Collect it and burn it. Remember this. So this is the reason why Harun a.s. he told them, everybody bring this wizard that you've been carrying and hiding, all this gold and jewels of the Egyptians, and burn everything. So they threw everything in the fire, and Samari being a craftsman, what did he do? He put it in the form of a golden calf. Alright? So this is what happened. Now, others say, others say that these jewels, Zinat al-Qawm, it was actually their own. Because think about it, if you were to leave home, alright, in the middle of the night, and you're told you're leaving forever, you're not coming back, what would you take with you? What would you take with you? Your most precious belongings, right? Which means that if there's a piece of furniture that weighs, you know, for instance, a hundred kilograms, okay, a solid wood or whatever, and it's original, and it was for thousands of dollars, you're not going to carry that. Why? Because it's too big, it's too heavy. What are you going to carry? Something that is of value, and it's also easy to carry. Correct? And what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Money, cash, and jewelry, gold. Right? And this really shows to us what the priorities of a people are. Because what you take with you, means most to you. If you had to leave, all of a sudden, what would you take with you? Think, what would you take with you? Hmm? Something that matters most. For some people, perhaps it's their computer. Right? For other people, it's, I don't know, hmm, books. Okay, mashallah. Very good. You know, um, Sheikh Rustam ibn Taymiyyah, when he was little, the Tatar, Mongols, they were invading the Muslim world, right? And they received news in the city of Harran, that's where they used to live, that the Tatar are coming, so leave. So they had to leave quickly. So his family, you know what they took with them? Books. They put all their books, their library, on a cart. And they were pulling or pushing that cart themselves because they didn't even have animals to do that for them. And there came a point where the cart wouldn't move because, you know, the wheel it got stuck in something and the Tatar were very near. So the entire family, you know, got busy in making dua and amazingly their cart, it, you know, it was freed and, and they kept going. So the only thing they took with themselves was their books because that is what was of most value to them. What you take with you, what you keep with you shows what you give importance to and really shows what your life is worth. It shows what you've been striving for, what is most important to you, what your heart is most attached to, what your goals are. So check, what is it that I love? What is it that I'm most concerned about? That it should be hidden in a locker. It should be hidden under my bed or it should be hidden somewhere so that no burglar will ever find it. Right? So the Bani Israel, they took their gold with them. All right? And when they took it, now what happens is that when you're traveling, and what you have with you, even if it has a lot of value, what happens after some time? What happens? You want to throw it because you're tired of carrying it. You're tired. You know, this is why when you're packing your suitcase, you're like, is there any more space? Is there any more luggage allowance? Can I fit more stuff somehow? 
But then when you reach the airport and when you find out that you've missed your flight and you have to stay at the airport overnight, what do you want to do with all that luggage? Get it out of my sight. I don't want to carry it. I don't want to know it. I don't want to see it. You packed it yourself. But you don't want it anymore because it's become a burden on you. So the same thing happened with the Bani Israel. They were tired of carrying their stuff. So what happened? Samari said, you know what? You're tired of all of this. Give it to me. Remember those idols we saw? Musa's gone. Who knows? He might never come back. Give this gold to me. I'll make something for you. I'm very skillful. You just give me a chance. I'll make something for you. So this is what happened. They were carrying the awzar min zinat al-qawm faqadhafnaha. They threw it, meaning into the fire, to burn it. فَكَذَلِكَ أَلْقَ samari And Samri, he produced this calf. So you understand the two explanations? Alright? فَأَخْرَجَ لَهُمْ So he produced for them, he extracted for them. Who Samri? Ijlan, a calf. Jasadan, that had a body. Meaning, it was a statue of a calf. And this Ijl, lahu khuar. It would even make a sound. Khuar, khawara. The sound of a calf. A lowing sound, mooing sound. How did this calf make sound? How? One explanation is that it was hollow from the middle. Alright, so when the wind would blow through it, it would make a sound. Alright? And it's also possible, Samiri, maybe he knew some kind of magic or something, Allahu A'lam. He did something, and because he was a skilled man, and at that time, such things were common. So, lahu khuwa. فَقَالُوا So they said, هَذَا إِلَهُكُمْ This is your God. Worship this idol, worship this calf. وَإِلَهُ Musa And the God of Musa, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَنَسِي He forgot. Who forgot? Samiri forgot. Samiri forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the reason why he showed the people the calf and he said, look people, this is your God, worship this calf. This ayah can also be understood as, فَقَالُوا The Bani Israel said, هَذَا إِلَهُكُمْ وَإِلَهُ مُوسَى This is your God and also the God of Musa. You know, this is that God that Musa has been talking about. This calf is the one that sent Musa and this calf is the one that parted the sea for us. This calf is the one that saved us. هَذَا إِلَهُكُمْ وَإِلَهُ مُوسَى فَنَسِي So he forgot. Who? Who forgot? Samiri forgot the truth. That it was Allah who saved the people. It wasn't this idol. It wasn't this calf that they had just made themselves. Or some have said that فَنَسِي Meaning Musa forgot. Meaning Musa forgot to tell you. Musa forgot to tell you. And see, he has still not returned. So he's forgotten you, he's forgotten everybody. So you know what? Let's do something ourselves. Allah says, أَفَلَا يَرَوْنَا Did they not see, Allah that not يَرْجِعُ إِلَيْهِمْ This calf, it would not return to them, قَوْلًا, a word. Yes, it made a sound, but that sound was just a sound. It wasn't any words. You understand? The calf, it made a sound. And that is basically what impressed the Bani Israel. That is what sold it. Alright, this is what they were most impressed by. Look, it makes a sound. Wow. Allah says, okay, it made a sound. But it wasn't words. It wasn't speech. Anything can make a sound like that. A bird chirps. A real cow moves better than this. Right? So, how could they worship it? وَلَا يَمْلِكُ And if they had used their mind, they would have realized that this calf, it does not possess لَهُمْ for them ضَرًّا any harm وَلَا نَفْعًا Nor any benefit. It didn't harm them, it didn't protect them from any harm, it didn't bring them any benefit. You know, there are many things that we are deceived by. We fall in love with them. We chase them, we pursue them. But if you really analyze it, what is its worth? What is its worth? What value, what meaning does it bring to your life? What benefit does it bring to you? What harm does it save you from? Nothing. The benefit is minimal. And, you know, it seems very foolish what the Bani Israel did. You make a calf yourself and you say it is God and you are very impressed by the sound that it makes. You know, the picture that comes to your, to my mind is of a toy. You know, you press a button and it makes a noise. And somebody's like, wow, this plastic thing talks. Amazing. 
and they start worshipping it. What would you think of a person who does something like that? It seems very foolish, right? So we behave in a similar way as well. When we are impressed by the things of this world and we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we are chasing the things of this dunya while we have forgotten Allah. And we look exactly like the Bani Israel, exactly what they did. وَلَقَدْ And certainly, قَالَ لَهُمْ هَارُونُ Harun had said to them before, مِنْ قَبْلُ From before. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains over here, the Bani Israel, they fell into this fitna. The fitna of the ijl, of the calf. And it wasn't that Harun alayhi salam didn't warn them. Because some of the ulama have said that the excuse that is mentioned over here that the Bani Israel gave, that oh, we just wanted to get rid of all the jewelry, and it was becoming such a burden for us. We just intended to burn it. But Samiri, look what he made out of it. So this is why we began worshipping. It just so happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes their excuse over here. No, it didn't just happen. You knew what was happening. Because Harun warned you. Harun warned you. You know, it's like if your parents are away and you're at home, just kids, and you're like, let's party. All right? And then what do you do? You call all your friends over. Anybody that you can. And you order any food that you can. And then what happens? Some of your friends, they appear, they end up doing something at your house that is very irresponsible, unacceptable. And then when your parents come, you get into trouble. Right? Now if your older brother, for example, he said, don't do that. Why are you calling that person? Why are you calling this person? How are you going to fit 50 people in the house? Are you crazy? Did you ask mom? You should at least tell them. If they warn you, then you know what? This was not an accident. You are responsible because somebody warned you. So Allah refutes the excuse of the Bani Israel and He says, وَلَقَدْ قَالَ لَهُمْ هَارُونُ مِنْ قَبْلِ Harun warned them that, يَا قَوْمِ O my people, إِنَّمَا فُتِنْتُمْ بِهِ You are being tested through it. This is a fitna. This calf, okay, it's very impressive, it's gold, Samiri has made it, whatever, it's a test. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ And indeed your Lord, He is Ar-Rahman, He is the most merciful. Samiri forgot Allah, and Harun a.s. reminded the people of who Allah is. إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ Rahman. This idol is not your God. Your Lord is Ar-Rahman. فَاتَّبِعُونِي So follow me. Do what I am doing. Don't worship this calf. Don't listen to Samiri. وَأَطِيعُوا أَمْرِي And obey my order because I have been appointed as a leader over you. So listen to me. قَالُوا But what was the response of the Bani Israel? They said, لَن نَبْرَحَ عَلَيْهِ عَاكِفِينَ لَن نَبْرَحَ We will never cease. Meaning we will always remain. لَن نَبْرَحَ بَرِحَ Literally means to depart, to leave. Right? To leave. So, لَن نَبْرَحَ We will never leave. Meaning we will always remain in this condition. We will continue to. We will remain عَاكِفِينَ Ones that are devoted. Devoted to what? To the worship of the scaf. In other words, we're not going to stop. Hatta until yarji'a ilayna Musa, until Musa returns to us. Meaning, if Musa returns, then we can believe in his God. But if he doesn't return, then please, let us do what we're doing. We're not going to stop. So when Musa a.s. returned, and when he saw the great matter that had taken place among them, قَالَ He said, Ya Harun, O Harun, مَا مَنَعَكَ what prevented you? What stopped you? إِذْ رَأَيْتَهُمْ ضَلُّوا When you saw them going astray. When you saw the Bani Israel going astray. When you saw them making the calf. And when you saw them worshipping it. What stopped you? أَلَّا تَتَّبِعَنِي That you would not obey me. You would not follow me. Meaning, I left you with some instructions. Why did you not follow me? أَفَعَصَيْتَ أَمْرِي Did you disobey me? Now the question is, what were the instructions that Musa a.s. left Harun with? What did he tell him? We learn in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 142, that Musa a.s. he said to his brother Harun, أُخْلُفْنِي فِي قَوْمِي Be a leader in my people, meaning when I'm gone, you are in charge. وَأَصْلِحْ And do islah. Meaning whenever there is a problem, fix it. Whenever people are doing something wrong, correct them. Whenever they're going astray, Guide them. 
وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ And do not follow سبيل المفسدين The way of those who cause mischief Meaning people who cause mischief Don't listen to them So Musa a.s. gave this advice to Harun a.s. Before he left to the mountain Alright So when Musa a.s. returns And he sees the Bani Israel In that condition He asked Harun Why did you not do your job properly? You know so for instance Your parents are gone You threw a huge party at home. Who do you think they're going to ask first? The older brother. Where were you? What were you doing? Why did you not stop them? Why did you not tell us? So likewise, Musa a.s. first and foremost, he held who accountable? Who? Harun a.s. He said, مَا مَنَعَكَ إِذْ رَأَيْتَهُمْ ضَلُّوا أَلَّا تَتَّبِعَنِي أَفَعَصَيْتَ أَمْرِي Did you disobey my order? Why didn't you listen to me? Why didn't you do your job properly? Qala, Harun a.s. said, Ya bina umma, O son of my mother. Look at this. Ya, O ibn son, umm of my mother. Why did he say this? O son of my mother. Why? Hmm? Okay, to calm him down and also to soften his heart. He said, O son of my mother, la ta'khudh bilihyati. Don't seize me by my lihya. What is lihya? Beard. Don't grab me with my beard, wala birasi, nor by my head. It's as though he's saying, what are you doing? Do you realize what you're doing? I know you're very angry, but you're holding me by my head and my beard. Can you imagine? Just imagine, a man, his beard and his head is being held. You can imagine how angry Musa a.s. is. And how strict he is being with Harun a.s. So Harun a.s. says, Don't hold me by my beard or my head. Listen to me. Inni, indeed I, khashitu. I was afraid. An taqula that you would say, Farraqta. You cause division. Bayna bani Israel, between the children of Israel. Walam tarqub qawli, and that you did not wait for my word. Tarqub, is from the root letters, raqafba. Alright? And raqiba. What does it mean? Raqib is to be watchful. Right? To regard attentively. So Musa a.s. had left Harun with some words. So he said that if I pressurize the Bani Israel to listen to me, then what would happen? There would be a greater chaos. And then you would tell me that I didn't listen to you. Because you told me to do islah. Right? So in other words, what Harun a.s. is saying is that the situation got out of hand. So, I thought it was best to wait for you. I thought it was best to wait for you. I stopped them. I stopped them. I did my best. But if I were to stop them firmly and harshly, then what would happen? Some people would rebel against me. And that would cause the Bani Israel to become divided. That would cause them to raise weapons against each other. For some reason, when it comes to faith, when it comes to God or matters of religion, people become extremely emotional over there. They become very defensive. And what happens? They don't care about one another. They raise weapons against each other. Right? Or sometimes what happens is that when they are defending themselves, they oppose each other how? By raising weapons. So Harun a.s. he said, I stopped them at the beginning, but when they didn't listen to me, then I stopped. I did not tell them anymore. I thought it was best to wait for you. Because if I pressurize them, then they would turn against me. And if they would turn against me, Bani Israel would be divided. And then we would be in greater fitna. You understand? Now sometimes it happens that you see somebody doing something wrong. What is your duty? You stop them. Right? So you tell them, please don't do this. They don't listen to you. So then you try again. Please don't do this. They don't listen to you. You try again. They don't listen to you. Then what do you have to do? Mind your way. Mind your own business and leave them. In some situations. Why? Because if you don't leave them, you're going to make them turn against you. Then that house, that family it's not going to be a safe place anymore. People are going to be hostile with each other. 
And you, you see this. You know, for instance, a mother telling off her daughter, wear your hijab. Go put your hijab on. Change your clothes. But what happens? Does the daughter even listen? She'll roll up her eyes and walk away. Right? Now, there's a, an argument over clothes, and then tomorrow when the mother is trying to tell her, eat halal or don't do this or do that, she doesn't want to listen at all. She's completely blocked off her mother. Right? So, this teaches us a very, very important lesson in life. When you're dealing with people who are not willing to listen, then hold yourself back. Give them some space. Give time. Give time. Hopefully things will resolve. But don't pressurize, because if you will do that, you will cause a greater problem. You will cause a greater fitna. And this has happened too many times, unfortunately. That where it starts off with something very small. You know, an argument between parent and teenage child. And what happens? That small problem, it becomes so big that the daughter doesn't want to see the mother and the mother doesn't want to see the daughter. They don't know each other anymore. It started off with one small argument. This doesn't mean that you are accepting the wrong. Harun a.s. didn't mean that, okay, the shit that you're doing is okay. No. He made it clear, this is something that you should not be doing. But when they saw that they weren't listening at all, then there's no point telling them. No point telling them. So just wait. Wait for who? For the return of Musa a.s. So likewise, in life sometimes it happens. You have to wait for things to change. For someone to grow out of a phase. And then hopefully things will improve. So he said that I waited for you. In another place in the Quran we learn, قَالَ إِبْنَ أُمَّ إِنَّ الْقَوْمِ اسْتَضْعَفُونِي My people oppressed me. وَكَادُوا يَقْتُلُونَنِي They were about to kill me. Meaning if I kept stopping them, they would have killed me. So I had to, you know, let them be. Because otherwise I was putting my life in danger. What do we see over here? Harun a.s. what was his main goal? To do islah, to reform, right? To improve things. He stopped people from shit, but when they did not listen, he stopped. Because if islah is forced upon people, then it turns into fasad. Remember this. When islah is forced upon people, it doesn't remain islah anymore. It turns into fasad. And this is wisdom that we learn from the prophets of Allah. Something very important.